God. Exodus chapter 3, and we're going to begin from verse number 1. It's a little lengthy uh, reading. Amen. Everything we're doing today is a little lengthy, but it's okay. Amen. We're in the house of God. I said we're in the house of God. Amen. So help the preacher today. Don't fall asleep on me. Because I might just walk up to you and tap you on the shoulder. Wake up, brother. Wake up, sister. Praise God. Exodus chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 1 and on. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush, of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. He said, Draw not hither, not hither. Put up thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Don't you love it that God knows our pain and our sorrows? He is completely aware. Sometimes you might feel alone. Sometimes you might feel that God is not there, but he knows. I said he knows. He knows. For I am come down to deliver them. Everybody say come down to deliver them. I ain't come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring up, to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have seen, I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And our last verse, number 11. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen. Would you bow your heads as you, are right, as you are right there and would you ask God to speak to your life right now. Amen. And just for a moment, I want you to just uh, ask God to speak to you. Let us surrender our mind, our will, our heart to God to right now that God would, would speak to me. Say, God, speak to my heart, God. Speak to my life, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, Lord, I worship you, God, because you are so good, God. Your mercy is everlasting. Your grace is all sufficient. Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters that are here, God, today. I pray your blessings upon their life, God. I pray that revelation, understanding, God, would come to us today, God, through your word that you have laid on my heart, God. And I bind every spirit that will try to oppose it. I come against it in the name of Jesus. And I take authority in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. And I want to use for a thought this afternoon, God's answer for man's excuses. Amen. Can you say that with me? God's answer for man's excuses. Amen. 
Imagine yourself for a moment that you were God. Think about that. Imagine that you were God and you were the creator of the universe and you possess all power within yourself. And your people were being held as slaves in the land. And you seen their affliction and you seen their oppression. And all the years that had gone by that, that they had prayed for, they had asked you. And now it was time to deliver them from the taskmasters. Who would you choose to do this great work? If you were God, who would you send? Maybe you would send a great military leader to go out in a great battle, a great tactician, somebody that knows all about, you know, a, a battle and warfare. You would send that individual to go and deliver your people from the Egyptians. Or maybe you would send a skilled politician, somebody that knows how to say the right words. Somebody that knows how to just speak the words. And how to just woo the people. And as, if you were God, would you send somebody like that? Maybe you would send a, some great order, a speaker that could give a heart-stirring message that would, st that would stir the hearts of the people and say, yes, we believe. We believe. If you had all the population of the world at your disposal, I ask today, would you send Moses? Would you have selected Moses as your candidate to deliver God's people out of the land of bondage, out of slavery? And the question is probably not. You probably, you probably wouldn't send Moses because after all, he was 80 years old. He was 80 years old. He was a fugitive. He was running from the courts of Pharaoh. But amazingly, that's the one that God selected to do the job. Yes, he was well educated. But that was 40 years ago. Yes, he had, all, you know, he, he knew about the courts of Pharaoh. But that was also a long time ago. But yet when it came down, uh, when it came time for God to send a deliver to his people, this is exactly who he sent to get the job done. Yeah. To the human understanding, to our reasoning, Moses was a, a, a has-been. He was washed up. He was a, a nobody in the eyes of people around him. But in the eyes of God, he was God's man for the job. Right. Yeah. This was God's man. This is the man that God selected. And I think today that we are living in the midst of a world, brother and sister. Now hear me. We are living in the midst of a world that is dying and that is going to hell. They are dying without God. They are dying without him. Can I be painfully honest with you today, brother and sister? I seen brother Michael today that got baptized. And I wonder if you thought, well, it's just another baptism. It's just another person that got, that got filled with the Holy Ghost. No, it's not, brother and sister. It is somebody who was snatched out of the... the, the, the the hands of hell. It was
was somebody that was delivered from the hand of the oppressor, from the hand of the taskmaster. That's what took place today. Somebody's soul was saved. Somebody was delivered today. And I fear sometimes that we want to just in, we want to just come and just enjoy what God has for us. And we should enjoy what God is doing in our midst. We should enjoy the presence of God and, and, and run the aisles and do all of those things. We need to do it. But as we are here, brothers and sisters, there's people that are dying and going to hell. Now, now let that just sink in a little bit. And as Moses was God's man for the job, I want to tell you today, brothers and sisters, that you are God's man and God's woman for the job. You are it. Because if you are here today, God has called you. I said, God has called you, brother and sister. I was talking to the friendship group leaders, I believe it was last week, a comment that our co-pastor said a couple of weeks ago or so, that there are people that are going to hell, but I'm going to do everything I can to stand in the way. I'm going to do it. I want to do everything I possibly can. If that individual that I come in contact with, if that person that, that, that I know and is on his way to hell, he's got to get through me. Amen. He's got to get through me. Amen. I thank you for your testimony, Brother Michael. And that's what we got to is tell him. Tell him that there's a Savior, brother and sister. That there is a God that can save and deliver. That they don't have to live this way. Or is this too hard? Brother Fidel, talk to me about the goodness of God, the love of God. Talk to me about the joy of the Lord. We have all that. But God has made me responsible. He has made me responsible. And he's made you responsible to tell somebody about God. To tell them. That's why we're doing the home friendship group today. Because somewhere in this, in this ministry, you can get involved. You can do something. You can tell somebody, just simply invite them to the home friendship group. And let the, the one that's leading it, let them minister to them. You just bring them. You just bring them. Where would Brother Roger Gates be today if it wasn't for a home friendship group? Where would he be today? Sister Sylvia. But this is an avenue. And I know that sometimes it could be like, oh, well, here we go again. We're doing this. But brother and sister, if it's what God has called us to do, if this was God has given the, 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 the pastor of the church to do, then brother and sister, let's back up the vision of our pastor. Let's back it up. Out of a congregation like this, only 57 go to home friendship group. But that's another story, right? <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> and and I, I'm not mad. <laughs> Believe me, if you knew me, you, you, I love you. I would do everything in my power to help you. If you ever became my best friend, I would be the best friend you ever had. God, brother and sister, God wants to, to awaken us. There's a banquet being every you know, brother and sister, what I've been picturing, every time we've come, we 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 come to the house of God, there's a banquet where God
God prepares the food for all of us to come and eat of the spiritual things of God. And we partake and we rejoice. And don't misunderstand me. This, we need to rejoice in the presence of God. And, and, and he sets a table before, like David said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And we come to the house of God and, and we, we partake of what God gives to us. But this banquet, we need to invite others to come and share what God has done for us. Let them know. Let them know that God can deal, uh, heal. God can deliver. God, God can do it. He can. He can. Until the, until the day I die, I'm going to just keep believing that God is able. He can do it. There is nothing impossible for him. You know, Sister Helen Pena, she's been having these migraine headaches for some time, for a long time. And I'm praying for her, and when she comes to the altar, I pray, and I, and I keep asking her, sister, how are those headaches? I said, Brother, you know, they're still there, you know, and, and, and they kind of go here and there. But I, I, I want to hear the report. They're gone. Yeah. I'm free. Yeah. I'm healed. Because this is, up, we're apostolic, brother and sister. Yeah. We are apostolics. And what does it mean to be an apostolic? It means signs, wonders, and miracles. It means people being healed. When they come to the house of God, something has got to happen. Somebody's got to get saved. Somebody's got to get delivered. Somebody's got to get healed. Somebody's got to be delivered, brother and sister, when we come to the house of God. I'm not, I don't know about you. I, I don't want to just come here, just fill a time and just go home. I, I don't want that. Especially if you're not living right for God. And you come and hear the word of God and you leave this place still unsaved. Or on your way to hell. It's unacceptable to God. I said it's unacceptable to him. He wants you to be saved. There is an eternity with God. And there's also an eternity without God. Where do you want to end up? Where do you want to be? I'm just telling you point blank. Where do you want to end up? I don't understand people that come and come and come and just visit, visit, visit. And don't give their life to God. This life, short. It is so short. It goes like that. She seems like yesterday I had my little six kids running around. <laughs> my little line of ducks. And look at them now. They're grown up. They're married. I have grandchildren. And I look back. Where did it go? Where did that time go? Where did it go? And those, you think that life will wait for you. That time will stop for you. It will not. It will not stop for you. And unless you get a hold of God and repent of your sins, you will enter into eternity without God. And that is eternity. That is eternity. And I speak this way to you, brother, sister, because I'm concerned for your souls. Church, I'm concerned for me, for you, that what am I doing for the cause of Christ? What am I doing to tell people about God? What am I doing? I thank God my wife gave testimony this, uh, this morning in fasting. 
today, this very day, 32 years ago, April 28, 1981, I was baptized in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and it's been the best experience of my life. It's been the best journey of my life. Yes, there have been ups and downs. Yes, there have been a lot of things that, come, that have come my way. But you know what? God has helped me through them. God has strengthened me. God has helped me through all of my trials, all of the things that I went through. God has helped me through them. He has been the one that has delivered me. And I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to go into my notes, but I'm going to close with this. If you would come, Brother Eddie. I'll save this for another time. I just feel God just directed me in this, this way today. I want to ask you, brother and sister, as I was thinking about all of this, you know what I feel? That's so, just me thinking that when I get to heaven, somehow, some strange way, I'm going to feel that I didn't do enough. I could have done more. I could have done more. I could have told that individual that God can help your need. God can heal you. I could have told that person that. I could have sacrificed so much more when I get into the presence of Jesus. I could have given more of my life to Him. I could have surrendered more to God. I don't want to live a life of apathy. Oh yeah, they're dying. They're going to hell. It doesn't matter. It matters. It matters to God. It matters to God. And that's why he called you, brother and sister. He called you. He called me to let them know. He could have waited. He could have reserved the Apostle Paul for this time to do great miracles. But he didn't. He reserved you. And he reserved me to tell people about God. To let them know that there's a Savior that cares for them. That he doesn't want them to perish. Those of you that have good jobs, that, that, that are that have gone to school, give it to God. What good is it that you have to get all these resources, your houses, your cars, and all of these things, and it's all for your good pleasure and not doing anything for the kingdom of God? Because we have people that are educated, but I see you, that you're more focused on other things and not the things of God. This is just a call from God letting you know that is temporal. It is temporal. We have to lay up treasures in heaven. You lay treasures here on earth, the rust, they will corrupt and they will wither away. At a funeral, you will never see a, a U-Haul right behind that hearst. Because it, it's not going with them. It's staying here. Aren't we funny? We know this, but yet we get caught up in those things. 
I'm not saying that you should enjoy the fruit of your labor. You should enjoy. You should enjoy your family. Take them places. Do things. But the kingdom of God is first. It is first, brother and sister. It's number one. It's number one. I'm going to open this altar. And I'm going to invite everybody to come. Come, brother and sister. And can we repent and ask God to forgive us of our apathy? They say, God, give me a conviction that I will tell somebody about who you are. Would you stand with me? Would you come at this time? And will, we, will we just ask God, let us ask him today, God, I haven't done enough. Give myself away. I haven't done enough, God. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Give myself away. Come on, church. So I want everybody to come. I know that the, the altar here is small because of the tables, but come. Give myself away. Come.